Alrighty, this is another one of those rare instances where Maelstrom has an advantage over Thor. So let's Combinatorify, Nameify, Mixerify, and then Maelstromify. That's totally a word. Now I'll just put in a single note to work with. Okay, so the note's in there and I've soloed it. And in Maelstrom, we want to make two sawtooth waves. Let's initialize first. There we go. And we're going to take each one down an octave and pull the attack right down so it hits in nice and hard. Then on the second oscillator, we're going to move the index all the way to the right. And this means that both waves start at slightly different points, so it thickens up the sound with slightly different tones. No filters necessary, just route them both through. And then turn the spread to full just to widen the sound a bit. So this is what we've got so far. And that's the basis for the tone. Now for that pitch bending. This is where Maelstrom comes in handy. Up in mod A here, turn on one shot, which is the option that Thor hasn't got. This means it applies this modulation once at the start of the sound, then never again. Also turn on sync, turn rate to two to four, or however long you want the pitch bend to last. Then turn the modulator pitch knob to about 41. And this defines how high the pitch will go, so feel free to be more painful with a higher value. Now take a listen. Almost getting there, but we want it to just go up, so let's move to a ramp. There we go. Now take a listen. Nice and siren-like. Siren in the sense of an horrific accident has occurred, not in the sense that an enchanting bird woman was luring a sailor to his death. To be honest, if I was a sailor and a smoking hot bird woman started screeching like this, it might be a bit off-putting. Either that or I'd be really inclined to sample her. You know, this is just about the weirdest tangent I've ever gone on in one of these tutorials. Back to the track, we've still got some thickening up to do. So, let's right click and create a UN unison unit, UN16 unison unit, and fully detune it with a half dry wet. Let's listen. There, lovely and thick, like an innocent smoothie. I don't feel bad about advertising them. They're delicious, and I get the feeling they'd condone being metaphorically related to Dirty Dubstep. Okay, do the same widening trick again, with one channel left and one right from the UN16, so we're just going to drag this R to that L. There we go. And just pan them. Hard left and hard, oop, and hard right. Then just add an RV7 digital reverb. This one's fine. Just bring down that decay a little bit, and the size as well. So it's a shorter reverb, it's got slightly less high frequencies, and it's not too big. Then dial it in by about 5 eighths on the aux knob, so around 90. Et voila! We've made three sweet synth sounds. An ARP more metallic than James Hetfield in a yeah yeah ha 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 saying competition, a lead synth more phasey than A.Cos 2 pi FT plus theta, and a pitch bend synth more awesomely painful than breaking your leg while snowboarding down a volcano. Join me again tomorrow for day five where I'll be looking into some more stuff. More specifically, some pads. Doodle pip. If you found this video useful, like it and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest Boiner Band videos. You can follow me on Twitter at Dave P. Brown. And if you want to improve your production skills, head over to the Boyna Band forum at boynaband.com slash forum and sign up so you can share your songs, get new fans, and valuable advice on how to improve your productions. Links for that in the description. Cheers for watching and have a nice day!